Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So, the Roy DeMeo Lincoln 59th Street story, as I labeled it, uh, is only half done. So now I'm gonna tell you what happened. First off, I'm gonna tell you guys that there, there was no underwater video because the visibility was zero. So let me tell you what we learned about the East River. Number one, it's not 17 feet deep all the time. When we went there, it was 24 feet deep. The car did move. The car wound up entangled in a big tarp. The diver had to spend 15, 20 minutes just cutting the tarp away. I think the tarp came from when the 59th Street Bridge was painted, like back in 1990, they had these big tarps and it looked like one of them moved or, or went. Anyway, so we learned that the depth isn't always the same. It went from 24 feet to 17 feet. When we were there in July, July 18th is when we went there. So we, we, um, we now we know a great deal. We, we got, know a great deal. We now know that the visibility on July 18, 2023 was about eight feet, maybe even longer. I mean, this visibility when we went there was zero. The diver had a crawl on his hands. So this is what we this is what we learned. We did find the car. It took him most of the dive for the first day. It was two days diving, three dives. One of the three dives had two divers from up in Middletown. So this is what we learned. We, learned. the car moved. The, f the front of the car, the motor, the transmission, the nose as we call it in the business, fenders, hood are gone. It broke away so you only have the, the body. The two door, the four doors are off. We knew that last time because they were on the ground. We could see it. The trunk lid is gone. The trunk floor is gone. The car is on an angle and the spare tire was there. The diver actually went with a shovel and dug down until he hit beach sand. So, it's a bit of a relief for me because there were no remains found in the car because as I said before, they were, the trunk floor was gone. The tire was on the ground. The diver did recover the two coil springs because now the car is on its side. The car's actually moving now in, in one year. It's, you know, I, I can't believe it moved. Uh, so what else? The trunk deck, deck lit it was gone and there's no remains. That's good for Kevin Marr. Why is that good for Kevin Marr? Because there's no remains in there and I don't have to worry about that. Um, so, the, dive, the diver, Anthony, told me he's not done because just like we found the steering wheel, how heavy is the steering wheel? The lower dash pad, how heavy is that? That was, that was right there. It wasn't found inside the passenger compartment of the car. Rather, it was found outside it, maybe two feet from it. That's where it was found. So why can't there be human remains there? As I said before, we, we're learning more about the East River but with these two dives a year apart that um, it's not always the same. Uh, diving is very uh, tiresome. Tiresome, is that the right? Tiring, tiring for the diver as he's got to go on the ground and, and feel and he's being tugged away. It, it's, 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 it's treacherous. It's, it's absolutely treacherous. Hang on a second. So, it's good news for me that there's no remains in the car because there is no st such thing as the statute of limitations for accessory after the fact of murder. So I was always worried about that. Two days after I put that car in the river, 
Roy DeMeo went with another 1972 Ford LTD, and he threw it in. Did a video about it two and a half years ago. Check it out. Uh, so we got that car to, to find. So this is what's going to happen next. And you're going to be there. I'm taking you with me. All my audio, all my subscribers. Hey, and what's up with the... Come, come on, guys. Subscribe already. You're making me look bad to the point where I just want to maybe just go. Like, what am I, what am I wasting my time here for? I'll, I'll tell you, it's not wasting my time because I met a, hundreds of thousands of great people that do enjoy the, vi the, the video, the content that we provide you guys, which is content you can't get no place else. So let me tell you what I'm gonna do. There's a police rep uh, okay, so now, evidence. Let's talk about evidence. Why I am 99% positive that the body in that car was none other than Nicholas Masucci. Now, I'm gonna read things to you. I'm gonna tell you things that are Unbelievable. So I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna tell you why I believe that that was his body in the car, okay? Number one, if you go on Roy DeMeo's Wikipedia play, page and you scroll down, you're gonna see, and we're gonna put this up, we're gonna put other stuff up. You're gonna see that in 1974, Salvatore Vitali, member of the Gambino, I think, Banano, Banano family, was ordered to deliver a corpse to Roy DeMeo so that he can dispose of it. And where did he drive? To a Queen's garage. So you look at 1974, you look at, you look at, you just, just look at that. Now, I'm gonna read this to you guys. So that's on Roy DeMeo's Wikipedia page. It was also in a book called Professional Killers, right here. See that book? And on page 90 in this book, and I'm gonna read it. Page 90. They had carried out their first murder as a team. You have to read the whole, you have to get that book. You really should get this book. But it may have not been their first dismemberment. Now don't forget, this is 1974. This was before uh, the Gemini's Lounge. This is when he, uh, Roy DeMeo made his first murder in July of 73, and now we're talking the next year, 1974. Have their first dismemberment. In 2003, Salvatore Vitale, a former Bonanno underboss, claimed in 1974, he had to drive to a body garage, a body, that's where it was. No, no, he had to drive, I'm sorry, drive a body to a garage in Queens, where Roy DeMeo and a few others, no doubt Joey Bricchini and this idiot here, and a few others waited. Vitaly claimed he saw DeMeo with a large knife. And don't forget, Roy DeMeo was a butcher, trained butcher. Roy DeMeo would have been, uh, with a large knife that he used. He saw him coming out with a, with a large knife that he used in the dismemberment and disposal. Right here, in that book. In 1974, um, as I said before, he wasn't, Roy wasn't whacking people for sport, he, you know. So we have that. Then we got the fact that Nicholas Masucci, now, the first thing I did when all this came out, is I still had some connections in law enforcement. I wanted to know what mafia hit, when, when a, mafia, a mafia guy disappeared without a trace and it was never recovered. 
1974? And the answer is there is none. There was none. I think there were six or seven murders in 1974, and all the bodies were recovered right where they were whacked. So um, now we got this guy, Nicholas Misucci. He drove from Kearney, New Jersey to Brooklyn. While he was driving, now Nicholas Masucci was a big numbers guy, a big uh, loan shark, gambling type guy. He was bringing in $2 million a week back in 1974 for the Genovese crime family, right? So he was worth a lot of money. And I'm not gonna get into all the other stuff, but I'm just gonna, I just wanna, this, is, th th this case really, really bothers me. So he leaves his house, his daughter dresses him. We know what clothes he was wearing. And Nicholas Masucci also had a glass eye. He had a, a glass eye. And so we, we, we know all that. We know um, that he made it to Brooklyn and went to a candy store. How do we know that? His daughter gave him, dressed him, got his, his, her father's clothes together, kissed him goodbye for the last time, and he drove off. Well, the Newark FBI was following him. And they followed him all the way from Kearney, New Jersey to Brooklyn when he went into the store. He comes out with the newspaper because he was a bookie that did, they did the numbers. Then he gets into a loaner car, a 74 white Mercury. And he gets in the car and he goes to this mafia restaurant where he was never seen again. The FBI lost him when he left the candy store. So we can place him in Brooklyn. Then there's a whole bunch of other, I did a video with uh, Thomas Steve, the guy that did all the research. You can go back and look at that. So we know he went to Brooklyn. We know he disappeared in Brooklyn. We know the car, the Mercury, the, the loaner car from Lincoln uh, that he was driving was located a couple of blocks from uh, 42nd Street. Um, so. Um, with all of that evidence, and don't forget, I don't care if you're in the mafia, I don't care if you're low income, if you're multi-millionaire, I don't care who you are. If you go missing, someone's going to report you, even if you're in the mafia, missing to the police. They're going to do it, as they did in this case. But it was in New Jersey, and that's why I couldn't find it, because it was in New Jersey, because I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. So now, having... That's the evidence. That's why I believe that could only be, number one, I mean, just look at it. This guy, Vitaly, goes to a Queen's garage. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's, this is where I picked it up. That's where I picked it up, from the body shop, and dumped it in the river. And on my way to the river, I smelled the decomposing body coming from the trunk. So, I'm just about done. I went to New York at least four times. I must have spent 10 grand going back and forth, doing all this shit, yeah. But I'm still not done. So what you're gonna see next on the next video is me actually calling the authorities on camera. I'm gonna call the FBI. I'm gonna call Carney Police Department. They have the open case on this guy. And, um, we got to get them to take that car out of that river. New York, if you guys looked at some of my old videos with, with Lieutenant uh, Dogbone there, and we're going to be doing this video on him too. I, I learned some very interesting things about Lieutenant Dogbone, the bald-headed Kojak-looking asshole. That's not a cop anymore. Um, uh, we're going to do a video on him. But so now I'm just going to put the ball in law enforcement's court. I got all this video, all this evidence. They can't ignore it. That car needs to be removed, and that car needs to, that, the, the area and where it is. Like I said before, if a light dashboard, it's only this, it's padded. If that was there for 50 years, why can't there be some remains somewhere in that area? That's all I got to say. So please like and subscribe. Um, and the next video that we're going to be doing is we're going to be on the phone with law enforcement and I'm gonna play out everything and see what they do. See you on the next one.